A pioneering AI system has enabled a paralysed man to walk again after being confined to a wheelchair for 12 years following a motorcycle accident. Now, 40-year-old Gert Zhang Oskam broke his spinal cord in his neck and was told by doctors that he would never walk again. After taking part in a groundbreaking study, Oskam was able to walk around for about half an hour, climb stairs and even stand independently at a bar to drink with his friends. The technology works with decoding his brain activity and then sending a message wirelessly to the nerves that control his muscles so that he is able to walk. Wow. So I'm delighted to say consultant neurosurgeon and complex spine surgeon Dr. Rafid al Mahufu. I don't know how to say that. Is it al Mahfouda? Have I got it right? Oh it's wrong. That's correct. Is it right? Wow, well, cracky. He joins me now. Wow. Dr. Rafid, this sounds incredible. Are, are you behind this or is this part of you, part of the study group? Or what's your involvement? Are you involved in this in any way? I'm not directly involved in it, no, but as a um, neurosurgeon and, and spine surgeon, we come across uh, patients who, who do uh, present with paralysis following, most mm -hmm. commonly following an injury, where, mm -hmm. where as, you, as you've just mentioned in your story, uh, this gentleman was unfortunate enough to sustain a fracture in his neck, I think, following a biking accident, and as yeah. a result, sustained a cord injury. So these are the kind of patients that we see pri primarily and to treat them initially, uh, for example, stabilizing their spine and uh, removing compression from the cord. But as with this gentleman, um, often they're left with um, a motor deficit or difficulty functioning uh, because of disruption of the cord. Mm. And science has been looking into um, ways of trying to restore that function over the years with some limited success, I would say. So mm. the, the exciting possible news here is that there may be a, a, a start of a process where these patients can be helped. And roughly we have around 1,000 to 2,500 patients a year presenting mm. in this way. So obviously it would be of great help. Um, but the device itself um, depends on picking up signals uh, from electrical activity in the brain. And that's how motor function starts mm. by electric activities from the brain, which are then um, conducted down tracts in the spinal cord and, and to, the, to the legs, to the lower limbs. Um, and the aim of the device is to, as, as you've um, mentioned briefly, decodes the signals that they pick up from the brain. So it depends on electrodes in the skull, then decoded and then stimulated um, mm. to the cord beneath the area of injury. How, how is this connected to him then? Is it because he was wearing something on his head? <clears throat> is it, it, did they have to do right. some surgery to get it to connect to the... the, the the, the, the neurons or the, the neurofibers or whatever they are in the brain? So basically there's two electrodes, which in, in, in the description of the, of the case, um, which have been implanted in the skull, which I can... Oh, we're losing you. <clears throat> oh no, we're losing you. We've lost you. Oh, I wanted to know how that works. I mean, that is quite incredible, isn't it? I mean, if this is the start of AI, and this is where we are at the beginning from what we know, then this could be quite incredible. We're going to try and get him back because I have lots of questions about it. And I'm wondering, you know, who would be able to use this? Would it be anybody who's paralysed? Are there any kind of limitations as to how and pretty much how soon this could be uh, something that, they, that could be we, we could have in normal, normal life? Let's get Dr. Rafid back in. Uh, Dr. Rafid, so just um, ask you again. So, so it's connected to some sort of electrodes or something, and then you were just saying how it worked, and then we lost you. Um, yeah, sorry. So basically, the electrodes are um, implanted within the skull to pick up the electric um, signal. When we think about our movements, um, the neurons are activated through neurotransmitters, yeah. i.e. chemicals, and then electric signals, which are action potentials. So we, we can pick yeah. up those signals. And that, that's a technology which has been present per se. Um, the difference here is the decoding of it and understanding um, the, the different amplitudes of these signals and which muscles they're aiming to activate. Um, mm. And the AI aspect of it is to, is to help modify and, and fine tune. So that's the newer part because the, then the, the other aspect of it is to re-input that signal as a, as a stimulus um, along the spine through something called the spine cord stimulator, which again is, is technology which has already been present and we've had for a while. I think it's, it's exciting, the summary from, mm. from my perspective is exciting news and obviously some hope for um, patients out there who, who have been paralyzed, but also 
as often is the case with the situations, a degree of caution and, and what it can be can be achieved. And it's at the start and it's one case only. There's a trial which is going to be conducted with more patients. And I think that's when we can we can rely a bit more on the data. Um, and just to, to note, this patient, for example, did have some power in his legs. It wasn't a complete, complete incredible. paralysis. If people, if people were listening and they have somebody who they'd like to put forward for this sort of trial, is that happening in this country or is it somewhere else? And is there anywhere do you know of that people can find out more about it? I mean, the study group itself is based in, in the Netherlands. Um, and I think this, this is at the start, so I wouldn't um, probably advise patients to go contact him directly. But... Mm. Um, for sure, at some stage, and, and usually these trials happen in, in more than one stage. Um, and if proved successful with good with good outcomes, then it will be um, oh. it, it will be brought to, to to more patients, hopefully. Wow! So the, 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 so there are good things with AI that could come out of things like this, uh, Dr. Rafid Al Mufad. Uh, thank you very much.